Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 5, Practice Problems Review is on bases and heights of parallelograms. Let's investigate the area of parallelograms some more. In Question 1, we're going to select all parallelograms that have the correct height labeled for the given base. And the key is the base and the height must meet at right angles. And so if we look at A, the base and the height does indeed meet at a right angle, so a is a solution. B, the height and the base meet at this not right angle, so B is not a solution. C, the height and the base meet here at the right angle, so C is a solution. And D, the base and the height meet at this right angle, so D is a solution as well. So we have A, C, and D as our solution. In question two, Oh, there's multiple choice. A, C, D. Question two. This side labeled B has been chosen as the base for this parallelogram. Draw a segment showing the height corresponding to that base. You have a lot of different options here. You could draw a line in here, right here, because that meets at a right angle and label it height. You could draw an extension out here and label a right angle there and call it height. Basically, the height can be any segment perpendicular to the base that joins the line containing the base to the line containing the side opposite the base. So again, a lot of different options there for question two. The key is right angles, please. Question three, find the area for each parallelogram. Well, if we lock in on A, this is two by four, and area will just equal, well, two times four, which is eight square units. Let's go to B. Let's label our base and our height. Let's call this side our base. Now let's bring our height in here and label this our height. Our base and our height meet at that right angle and our numbers for that one, two, three, four, five for our base, two for our height, so our area will equal 5 times 2, which is 10 square units. Let's move on to C. Now, your base doesn't always have to be the bottom. Again, I repeat, the base doesn't always have to be the bottom side. And so I could label this right here as my base. which means this side coming up to meet the two bases, this would be my height. Because really, under this scenario, I could have called this my base as well. What are my values here? Well, that base has a, a length of 2. This height has a length of 4. And so my area will be 2 times 4, which is 8 square units. And that's question 2, or 3. Question 4. If the side that is 6 units long is the base of this parallelogram, what is its corresponding height? And it's multiple choice, but let's zoom in here. They are saying that this length here of 6 as well as this here of 6, that this is the base. Remember, the base and the height must meet at the right angle. Well, I see a right angle here that connects these two bases, and so that must mean my height is 4.
And if we look at our multiple choice here, that would be choice C. Our height is 4. Question 5 now. Find the area of each parallelogram. Okay. A. We have our base of 9, our height of 4. And so if I take 9 times 4, that's going to get me 36 square centimeters. In B, our base and our height have to meet at a right angle. Let's call this length of 5 our base. Here's our right angle. Let's call that our height for 4. And so our area will equal 5 times 4, which is 20 square centimeters. And in C, as you can see here, base, then here is our height. And if area is equal to that base, which is B, times the height, which is H, so area equals BH, or just base times height. Hmm. Almost looks like that could be a formula or something there. Hmm. Now, question six. Do you agree with each of these statements? Explain your reasoning. One, a parallelogram has six sides. I disagree with that. A parallelogram has four sides. Two, opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. That's true. Three, a parallelogram can have one pair or two pairs of parallel sides. That's not true. It has to have two pairs of parallel sides. Four, all sides of a parallelogram have the same length. That's not quite true. They can, but it's not required. What we're going to look at then is it's not all sides of a parallelogram have the same length, but opposite sides of a parallelogram have the same length. Then, all angles of a parallelogram have the same measure. Very similar here. It's not all angles of a parallelogram having the same measure. I mean, they can, but they don't have to. What has to be true is opposite sides of a parallelogram have to have the same measure. Now, our last question, question seven, a bit of a challenge. A square with an area of one square meter is decomposed into nine identical small squares. Each small square is decomposed into two identical triangles. Now, before we even get into this here, it does say if you get stuck, consider drawing a diagram. Let's draw a diagram. Let's draw a square. Let's break it into nine identical small squares. Let's break the small squares into triangles and see what we can do with this now. Here's our big square, and if we divide this now, three lines or two lines going across and two lines coming up and down will give me pretty much, and you can kind of squint, nine identical squares. Then, if you take each square and break it into a triangle, There we go. And we're going to draw those triangles in. And just for full disclosure, the reason for the awkward pause there is I originally recorded the video writing and talking at the same time, but accidentally hit the mute button. And so now I'm re-recording over the writing. So if there's a little bit of goofiness there, that's why. Anyways, now we have the triangles all drawn in. We have, looks, um, you know, pretty close. Now, what is the area in square meters of six triangles? Well, I see six triangles up top there. One, two, three, four, five, six triangles. And if I take a rectangle around those two, 
I know that this length is going to be 1. But I need to figure out this length. And so to figure out this length, the whole side here is 1. And it's broken into thirds. And 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third is going to equal that 1. So what I end up with here is a rectangle that is 1 by 1 third. To find that area then, all I need to do is to take 1 times 1 third, which is 1 third square meters. Now, that's six triangles. Now it's asking us how many triangles are needed to compose a region that's one and a half square meters. Well, the whole square was one square meter. And that square itself was composed of 18 triangles. Well, 18 triangles then is equal to one square meter. Well, if 18 triangles is one square meter, and I'm trying to get it one and a half, how many triangles are in half a square meter? Well, how about nine? Nine triangles. If 18 is the whole, nine would be the half. Well, now I have one and a half, and so if I just take 18 plus nine, I would end up with 27 triangles being that one and a half square meters. And again, sorry for the goofiness with the audio versus the video here. Uh, accidentally hit mute the first time through. But that is it for this uh, lesson, Unit 1, Lesson 5 in Grade 6 on our practice problems. Good luck.